G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. If you've been following along on my channel, you know that I have just finished a complete brake upgrade on the 200 series. That includes new DBA slotted rotors and new brake pads on the front, as well as new DBA rotors on the back, new brake pads, and also new handbrake shoes in behind this drum. In addition to that, I've also swapped out the DOT 3 brake fluid out of the master cylinder and replaced it with DOT 4. The reason for doing that was just because the DOT 4 has a higher boiling point. Of course, the other reason for flushing the brake system in its entirety is to get rid of the old fluid and get new fluid in the system because of the hydrophilic nature of brake fluid. All right, let's take our engine oil first. Put a little bit of water in the engine oil, not a lot. And this is going to come as no surprise to anybody but the water is floating on top of that engine oil. The engine oil is hydrophobic, which means it's water hating. And if you stir it around, it might break the little droplets up a little bit, but the water is still floating on top of that engine oil. So what that means in real life is if you've got a component, an engine component, or, or any metal surface for that matter, coated in engine oil, and you hit it with a little bit of water, there's going to be a barrier between the water and between that metal component because the engine oil is hydrophobic. Okay, let's do the same experiment with a little bit of brake fluid. Pop that in, mix it around, and what do you see? That water has been completely absorbed into the brake fluid. So the brake fluid is what's called hydrophilic or water loving. So let's talk about the same situation. You've got a metal component like a brake pipe that's coated in brake fluid and it comes into contact with a little bit of water. What happens? That water will actually contact that metal component and you'll start to corrode it. And that right there my friends is why it's so critically important that you swap out the brake fluid in your car. Now the way that I've done that is first of all, I've sucked out what I could get out of here with my Succolator 2000 and that took out about 350 mil. I then opened up the bleeder valve on one wheel cylinder and drained the rest of this master cylinder which was another 350 milliliters. I then topped this master cylinder up with DOT4 and opened up the bleeder valves on all four wheel cylinders and allowed gravity to basically flush the DOT3 out of the lines. And I reckon I've probably put about 250 mil per line. So a total of one liter has been flushed through. So I'm very confident now that I've just got DOT4 in this system. So my bleeding from this point forward is to get any air that may be in the system out of the system. And I'm going to show you two ways to do that. One is the old fashioned way, which involves standing on the pedal. The other way I'll show you is more modern. And that involves a laptop and an OBD2 port reader. You want to see how I'm going to bleed brakes with a computer? Stick around. Now I filled my reservoir up with DOT4 and I'm in the back corner of the car, the furthest wheel away from that reservoir. I'm going to crack this bleeder and I'm going to allow that fluid to drain from the front all the way through here to the back. Pop a little hose on and there I've got it. I've just got gravity drawing all of the dot three that sits inside of these lines through the system and draining out here into that little catch container. I'll continue to do this until I get a little bit of a color change there from the dot three which is a dark brown to the dot four which is almost clear. All right, I got the bleeders on the wheel cylinders cracked and I'm just using gravity at the moment to flush all the dot three through the lines. I'm running about 250 milliliters through each of the four corners. So that'll be a total of a liter. And then when this is finished, I'll actually start to bleed the brakes, which will probably use another liter. So that'll be a total of two liters flush through the system. And I'm very confident that two liters is going to get any of the dot three out of the system that might be in there. The first thing that we've got to do is we've got to power up our version of TechStream. I've got an entire video on how to get TechStream working on a 64-bit laptop and that video is available in the library. 
So just like we saw in previous videos, we'll open up the virtual box and from the virtual box, we'll launch Windows XP. Now we've got our Windows 32-bit operating system running and now we plug our USB OBD2 port reader in. And from Windows XP, we'll launch TechStream. And we plug our OBD port reader into our OBD2 port in the car. We'll now connect to the vehicle. And there we have it, we're connected to the vehicle. I then go into the ABS, Vehicle Stability C Control and Traction Control ECU. Wait for that to connect up. I now go into the utility setting. And I go into the air bleeding utility, launch that particular program. And it tells us here that this function is used to purge air from the hydraulic braking system. And then we just follow our prompts. I am going to start with the rear left line, which is the furthest line from the master cylinder. I'll hit the next button. And it says here, perform the following operations. Open the bleeder plug. You can see the bleeder plug is open because we've got gravity dripping fluid through it. Press the next and wait for the timer. And it says, note, do not depress the brake pedal. Now we'll hit our next button. And you can hear funky stuff happening under the bonnet. Now it says, please perform the following operations. Close the bleeder plug. Close off our bleeder plug. Press next, wait for timer. Hit our next button and it says resetting. What that actual resetting is, I'm not sure, but it ha must have something to do with the master cylinder. Air bleed is complete. Press next to select another line or press exit to exit the function. I'm gonna hit next. I'm going to do that right rear line again and I will show you what it looks like at the master cylinder. Here's what it looks like at the wheel cylinder. And our air bleed is complete on that right rear line. Now I will continue to do this process. I will repeat it about five times per wheel cylinder just to make sure that I get all of that air out. I've got plenty of fluid. I'm pushing dot four fluid through it now. And once I've finished bleeding all four corners, we'll meet up again. Now the front left is a little bit different in that it asks you to hold the brake pedal then press next let the timer run its course and then release the brake pedal and press next that's quite interesting so it looks like it doesn't actually bleed fluid through the wheel cylinder and let's try the front right same thing press and hold the brake pedal hit next without releasing the bleeder plug then release the brake pedal and hit next. So on those two front wheel cylinders, I will open the bleeder plugs and just let gravity bleed through there and push any air out that might be sitting in those wheel cylinders. And now I'll show you the traditional method of bleeding brakes, which involves a helper up in the cab and somebody down here working on the brake bleeder. Just waiting for my helper to come down to the shed from the house. All right, pump and hold. Okay, pump and hold. Okay, you can let go. Now I gotta do the other break and then it's done. There's two reasons I like using the computer to do this. The first one is it's a one man job. I drive the laptop here and I work the brake cylinders here. Open the brake line, hit the next button, close the brake line, hit the next button, and that wheel cylinder has been bled. So that's one thing I like about it. The second thing I like about it is the volume of fluid that it pumps through the system is far more than what a single press on the brake pedal can give. I don't know exactly how it's doing it, but it must have a lot longer stroke with the computer than what it does when you actually use your foot to depress the brake pedal. So we get a lot more flushing through the system, which is a good thing for me. Now after my brake bleed, I'm taking the car out for a quick spin around the block because I want to make sure that I've got a nice firm pedal there and that I haven't introduced any air into the system. Well, I'm coming up to a roundabout here, I can hit the picks. 
nobody behind me, so they're not gonna go smashing into me. Yeah, fantastic. Those brakes are nice and hard. The line's no air in there whatsoever. I'd say those DBA brakes that I recorded on the previous video have probably got 20% better stopping power than the stock standard Toyota ones. Plenty of people on YouTube have done comparisons on that. So if you want some empirical data, just hop onto YouTube, do a search and check those videos out. Well, there you have it, folks. Brake system completely swapped out from dot three to dot four and bled with a laptop computer. How cool is that? I trust you got some use out of this video. More 200 series maintenance videos are on their way, so subscribe if you haven't already. In the meantime, everybody, keep the shiny side up. Bye now.